Yeah? What's up with that? I told Chika I'd invited a prostitute in my room. <laughs> What's going on YouTube? My name is Vitaminista and welcome back to some King Koi. This is episode I don't... Uh... Look at the title. It's episode that. Not see the previous episode, go ahead and watch it. You know the drill. What was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I posted a poll on my channel tab saying I will be focusing on visual novels for a while. So because of that, I was wondering if there are any specific visual novels you guys wanted me to check out. It doesn't necessarily have to be a Usersoft title. It could be other kinds and other genres that would also be nice too i wouldn't just want to do the romance of visual novels that'd be kind of boring right i would like to get some thrillers maybe some suspense going on horror stuff that would be really nice but i'm hoping that whatever you would be so kind as to head to the channel tab and vote comment any suggestion i'd greatly appreciate it anyways without further ado let's get straight into this video oh also drop a like for me please while you're at it if you enjoy this video and subscribe also if you haven't already done so let's get to a thousand subscribers anyways let's get started <clears throat> talk about off putting that didn't help me feel any better so i headed outside yeah tomorrow was already looking like it was going to be obnoxious as heck what should i do and then this one? God damn. At the scroll gate, I found Ellison speaking with several people in black suits. If she was here, that meant. I had it inside. I know this is sudden, but are the black suits free tomorrow? Some weirdo might turn up at the dorm tomorrow morning. She's a year our junior, but could you take her into custody if she shows up? I may have lost the battle initially. Hmm. But I was sure as heck gonna win the war. What are you up to on a day off? お休みだからや。今日は久しぶりのオフなの。夕方には龍蔵寺の会長との登会談ですが、半日オフでも久しぶりなの。せっかくだからこの子をたっぷり手入れしたくてね。She softly patted her favorite piano. So we had likely tuned it as the hammer from before was in her other hand. So, this is piano tuning? <laughs> no. Can I? Okay then. I didn't have anything else to do and I was curious. May as well have her show me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Whoa! <gasps> she took off the front of the lid and fiddled with internals. This is pretty exciting. That scared me. I thought she had split the piano too for a second there. That was really loud. Please don't do that again. She fastened those screw-like pieces lined along the inside of the piano with the aforementioned hammer. Oh, did I skip? I might have. Hold on, let's check. Oh, okay, we're good. <laughs> Kiro assisted Sylvia and adjusted the strings alongside her. あとはこうやって音を聞きながらこの身の音階にしていけばオッケー。最近ちょっと高すぎたから緩めようかしら。冬だし、あったかい音がいいわよね。ふえ。ワントーン。我々には調整どころか分かりもしない世界ですね。the subject reminded me of the difference in sound quality between CDs and records, or how audio could change depending on the voltage of a speaker. There really are a ton of strings. How many are there? <sighs> that is a lot. More than I expected. So we adjusted the tension and the pins as needed in order to verify the integrity of each string. She clearly knew what she was doing, and it was quite entertaining to watch. But... 200 strings is too many. I never thought it would take so much time. I stood by and waited for some time, even though it seemed like she was nowhere near finished. It's been quite a while since her princessy sides reared its head. No, none really. I forced a smile. 
this were, hypothetically, one of Sylvie's concerts, then I would thoroughly enjoy listening to her music and could easily spare the time. But, tuning. This was a job for a true enthusiast. Since sound was important, it also meant I had to keep quiet. Definitely boring to watch for an extended period. However, Elisan shook her head. Oh no. You set yourself up, bro. You set yourself up. Mm, sure, I guess I can. This was unusual. Alessa normally prioritized common sense over Sylvie's wishes. Oh, I'm sorry. Sylvie's slave? You want me to feel honored because she's tuning her piano and I'm watching. Oh my god. Huh. Oh, is it? Now that she mentioned it, Alessa and those black suited guards were standing outside earlier. If Sylvie was kept at a distance, then that would naturally go for watching the tuna piano too. Well, yeah, of course. She led me to a corner of the concert hall. She didn't bother Sylvie if we chatted from this distance. <laughs> Sorry, that was obviously a joke. Hmm. Hmm. looked straight ahead and peered at my face. Although she lacked worldly senses in a different way from Sylvie. I guess I should say this much was expected, but she did seem exceptionally trustworthy. You might say she was like a big sister. She had this ambiance that made you want to rely on her. Absolutely. Big sister, that's all she is. Chieka said she was going to stop by tomorrow. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Why would she make that noise? Chieka hadn't told Elisan about her, but she shouldn't be the one person who knew after doing an investigation into my personal life. But she investigated the sort of life I led up until summer of this year. So We're not on speaking terms right now. Thanks for being considerate of everything with my old school. Thanks, Big Betty Ellen. That was reassuring. We appreciate you. The thing that I liked most here at Noble Academy was that nobody her, her, here knew anything about my old life. It wouldn't interest them in the slightest because I was a commoner. And that was comforting in its own way. The one and only person who had investigated me, Elisan, was also being considerate. I was truly grateful. It was a time in my life I didn't want to remember. Why though? Good work. Your mom. Nothing, forget that. If you're finished tuning, aren't you going to put it to use? Would you let me listen? Eh? So we turned to the piano and stroked its strings really aggressively. A concert for Elisan and me. No, that was wrong. A concert just for me. The only invited guest began. At this academy, Ichimatsu Oro was a semi-vulgar commoner with poor grades. The novels often looked down on him, but this mysterious man had caught the eye of Princess Sylvia. It was a great position to find myself in. Unremarkable yet special. Ideal, if you ask me. I could agree. Ideal. Emphasis on the ideal. I don't want to go back to the old days anymore. To those times where I was so uncool. You still are, bro. Now that she had finished tuning, I had her I had her play a few pieces for me before taking a break. To be honest, I couldn't tell the difference between the tones. Regardless, Sylvie's performance was beautiful. She had some wiggle room in her schedule before she had to get back to work, so we killed time together afterward. Well, the sun had cleared out, so we held a tea party for two in the classroom. Or so I like to say, but it was just with plastic bottles. You think? I think it's kind of iffy and overly sweet, personally. <laughs> Lemon tea is too overpowering, and when you drink it black, hmm, subtly sweet, huh? That's because I only consider black tea tea. Putting sugar in just doesn't click with me for some reason. So, so, Nihon 
Green tea も苦いもの飲むし On that point, I'd actually love to tell foreigners something. Don't put sugar in green tea. It's gross. Oh? In the worst case, it's fine in matcha. Matcha is too bitter, so adding some sweetness suits it. But green tea is no go. We would always have lovely conversations like these whenever we were alone. Everything came naturally with her. I guess I also felt that way around Rhea and Reyna, but. It's still baffling to me at times that I had the honor of speaking with the great Sylvia Lecou's crown. This was a true luxury. She was giving me etiquette lessons. What do you think? Do I seem much more noble than usual today? Probably not. What a letdown. Sylvia glanced away. After acting a bit apologetic, No! Don't lie to her. Be honest. Be honest. Mina sucks. Get her out of here.、Hmm? Yes, she is. Yes, sir. Get her out of here, please. You're absolutely right. Bro, we're just friends though. Yeah. Come to think of it, these etiquette lessons all started because I wanted to be Sylvie's friend. It is. She sounded apologetic. While I wouldn't call Mina Chan to bother, I'd second guessed myself and wondered how I'd gotten into such a troublesome situation. Still, it's not a big deal, and everything's fine with Mina Chan. So Don't. What a capper, bro. Jesus Christ, simp. Mina Chan can be a little fuzzy at times, but her flawless etiquette more than makes up for it. She knows when she's pushed too far. Her being a perfectionist also means my room is always clean, so she's been a huge help. Oh, yeah, I guess she does do that. Oh, no! Go back. Alright, let's see here. Oh, no, we're good. I have such an adorable maid looking after me. As a man, I've got nothing to complain about. I wish she'd spare me the whip, though. I did think royalty's perspective on these sorts of situations were a little skewed, though. I thought you were the older sister. What's going on here? Even though she's younger? Well, so we always had been easy going since we're back. So Mina chan probably took her duties much more seriously at an earlier age. I'm not. Sorry, you're gonna have to speak up. I can't hear you. Huh? Her quiet mumble barely reached my ears. How long are we gonna lie to her for? We all question it. Sylvia. Sylvia. Wow. You have around 10 brothers and sisters, right? That's a lot of sex. Holy crap. That's a lot of ball flapping, butt smacking. They probably heard it happen too. Oh no. That was a lot. That put the ninth princess, Sylvie, just about in the middle. Yeah, I think the background music sounds better now. Treated like a guest? 
I was curious, but she didn't seem at all interested in elaborating given that ambiguous for reasons, but... <laughs> wow, that's so great. I I see. Your closest friend in Japan? She said it in passing, but it made my heart race. Why? Sylvie's sisterly side must have emerged. And she started to brag about her little sister. Yeah, I do agree that she's cute. <laughs> I'd love to have a girl like her as a little sister too. I'd love to have her call me Oni-chan. Oh no, stop. Oh no, don't make it worse. Sylvia, shut up. That'd be great too. Oni-chan would still be better though. Uh, but Oni-sama's kind of going on it. No! Not I. Ever since I was little, yeah. I always thought, I want a little sister that calls me Oni-chan. Actually, I wouldn't mind having a little brother. I just want someone to call me that. Whoops, that's one of many... Whoops, that's one of my many secrets, but I don't recommend prying any further. <laughs> Hi. Great idea. Sylvie giggled. I don't know if that's something worth giggling about. Just want talking about ourselves like this, and we had a wonderfully lively mood going. We really did have good chemistry. I'd have a vague inkling of it for a long time, but was convinced of it now. <laughs> Oh boy. Oh god. Don't let her cook, please. The conversation continued. Pie, huh? Hmm. Sylvie proudly held her chest high. Mina-chan and Reina had mentioned Sylvie's sweets before, but I'd yet to try them myself. I like it as a meal if it's going to replace the main course. What about with potatoes? What? That's horrendous. Don't, don't do that. Uh, that's a little different since it doesn't actually use eel, but a fine powder. Sylvie looked stumped. I would be too. She seemed to be running out of options now that we narrowed it down to a meat pie. I'd honestly be fine with something sweet, like chocolate or apple pie. Ah! Oh. Apple pie. What? I love an apple pie. Um, one that uses apples from Aomori, if possible. Aomori ga suki ne, Oro. Has a strong French influence there, so. Could you make me an apple pie? Motiran ya. Kitai shite chodai. Sylvie smiled sweetly. I bet Ria would be over the moon if I saved her a piece. With that, I had selfishly requested a princess's home cooking. I had quite the luxurious life, huh? No, bro, not yet. Should I tell her about tomorrow and Chieka coming to the dorm? You probably should, so you'll find out. Oh, I know. Hey, Sylvie, do you remember Chieka? Sylvie put a finger to her chin. Yeah, when we were little. She should have also taken part. It's okay if you don't remember. You're not missing out on much. Sylvie seemed lost in thought. It's fine if you can't remember. She got in touch with me recently and I was just thinking about her. The thing is, Chieka. Oh. Hmm? 
Did you remember? おもい出したの昔、一が何度か話していた女の子よね。一つ学年が下で、十六歳からどうやって。えっと、同じく仲良しの島くん、高藤くんたちも含めて、一のグループでよく遊んでいると聞いたわ。いや。でも私、結局その
Mm, ah, she figured that out for my birthday photos? My head definitely was shaved in those. I'm not. Going bald and shaving your hair are two totally different things. <laughs> it's not falling out. It's really thick now that it's had a chance to grow out. I'm not augmenting anything. Look at these roots. These pure, unadulterated hair roots. She bugs. <laughs> Dang it, she was teasing me. <clears throat> yeah, more or less. Summer. Huh? かわいい。私、かわいい。For some reason. すいません。はい。あ、あ。ちじ。よく見ると yeah. Yeah, that's because I cleaned. What is it? Huh? Why are you asking me that? Yeah, <laughs> And I was laughing while rolling around in the bed. <laughs> she must have had the wrong idea. Chieka and I weren't even remotely like that. Chieka, huh? I thought we were going to meet up at 11. It wasn't, e it wasn't even 10 yet. That's unfortunate. I told you I clean regularly. Guess it was supposed to be a trap. Dang her. Chiaka took a long Chiaka took a lock around the room. Her eyes landed on the trendy girl sprawled out on my bed. オロとはクラスメートで。あ、はい。チーカです。と。じゃあ、私は邪魔にならないように置いとましますわ。オロ。また後で。シャー。レナンドとカップ。レナンドとクラスメンが帰る近くをボスラフト。あ。あの、オロ
It's pretty deep now that I run it back to my head. Why is she flipping out? I don't get it. Chiako finally finished inspecting my room before the morning was over. So I played that off? No? Okay. <clears throat> We had lunch at the cafe outside. To be blunt, I do think it's a pretty high in lifestyle to lead on my own. Having a convenience store 30 seconds from your front door is pretty sweet, yeah. It's a shop designed so you can put together practically everything you need for daily life, after all. Now that I had a third party take a look at my current lifestyle, I guess it was inviolable. I was aware of that. Yeah? What is up her? Today, Jesus. Oh, here Yeah, good work. Got practice later? Hi, I sit the kimos. Bomba, me, Konorio, Saki, got a one of the stuska sugataka me and I in the kiddo. Masaka, they don't get the wrong idea. This is absolutely a coed dorm. The ratio of women is a little on the high end, though. In actuality, the ratio was one man to 96 women. Oh, I forgot about that. I'm telling you, it's a misunderstanding. Yeah. <laughs> I think this girl likes him. That's 100% your fault. When you ask me things like, are you doing well? Or are you eating? All I can ever respond is that I'm fine or that I am eating. <laughs> yeah, she definitely likes him. Yeesh, you're not my mom. You've always had been this way. You've always been this way. You're clearly the youngest. <laughs> she was right, so I couldn't exactly argue the point. Chieka had been this way for the longest time. If I were to describe her in one word, it would be naggy. She would meddle in every little thing a person did. You might call her eager to put on the big sister act, or just quick the fuzz over with others. There had been times that trait of hers had rescued me. I knew she cared and always worried about me. And so, whenever she was in trouble, I made sure to do whatever I could for her in return. <laughs> So what's up with that guy, for real? Tell us already. Cherka touched on the subject I'd expected her to bring up eventually. She hadn't come here today. Blah, 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 blah. She hadn't come here today to clean or inspect my room, but to talk about Toriokun. Go by yourself. I have plans. She obviously saw through that lie and looked visibly upset with my response. Yeah, 
And what's how they used to be? I was glad I'd brought her to the cafe as there were a number of witnesses in that foyer. In the foyer. It wouldn't turn into a screaming match. Unlike what happened on that one summer day. Could we start talking about this already? My relationship with Dorio and the others is none of your business. Stop saying that. You're making me miserable. Mindful of watchful eyes, we quietly wrapped up our conversation. How did things go with the band club? I see. What about Mashira Senpai? Makes sense. And Miyama? I see. Wow, he has a lot of homies. <clears throat> That's it? Oh wow, that was way shorter than I thought. Come by in another year or so. And another year, so <laughs> I told her I was going home for a visit. Chieko was nagged at the very end, then headed back. Phew. Things got dicey for a minute there, but we avoided any huge fights. Good, good. Yeah? What's up with that? I told Chieka I'd invited a prostitute in my room. <laughs> ah, man, that's good. That's a good one. I'm kidding. I told her you're my classmate. You jump in my bed every time you visit me, but you should probably be more careful going forward. Still, any space you lay down in is kind of hot, so it doesn't bother me. A teensy bit. <sighs> Rena had completely turned the depressing mood around. She's good at that. Oh, that's awful. You shouldn't eavesdrop on people. Come on, Rena. I know that. Talking out in the foyer was a great way to avoid a confrontation, but the risk of others listening in was much higher. I was fully aware of that when I made the choice. It was out of my hands to some extent. Reyna! You, 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 what? Why are you bringing the mood down again? What's wrong with you? Jesus Christ. Help that she was quick witted. I didn't feel like explaining. That part obviously didn't make it across. Reyna didn't pry any further and simply gazed up at me. If I didn't want to say, I didn't have to. But if I wanted to spill my guts, that single expression told me I could. What a kind person. Chick was in the band club. But this past summer, we. I caused problems and it got in her club's way. I thought that might have put her in a touchy position, but yeah, the club appears to have carried on. All's well that ends well. Uh, that scared me. I don't recall mentioning the baseball club with anyone other than Elisa ever since I came to Noble Academy. She's smart. How did you know, Detective Sam? Mm. My shaved head gave me away? I regretted showing her that old photo yesterday. Oh, okay. Styling hair is annoying. I have hair like up to here, like you guys seen it. Like, not even like on my ears sometimes. And I'm already like. Annoyed moving it out of my face. It's so freaking annoying. Wavy, sometimes curly, sometimes straight. It's all over the place. 
写真の髪型は伸び出しててどう見てもおしゃれじゃないし今のオーロは寝癖とかないし髪が面倒な人種ではない一つはハゲタン I'm not going bald. ってことは坊主にした理由は残る一つだけ。Sports enthusiasts love that shit of look, and it's all a bunch of bullcrap. Nah, the Kurt seriously told us to shave once a month, and we had a pair of clippers in the club room for that exact reason. We weren't ordered to, but we wouldn't be put on the starting lineup if we didn't cut our own hair. I wouldn't call that corporal punishment. Our school was known for its baseball club, and a bunch of alumni would often come watch us practice. Those old farts would whine if our heads weren't shaved, so there was no way out of it. That was one of the more moronic aspects of baseball. Then again, this was an issue that pervaded all sports. Is that a for real thing? Like, outside of the US? Because I don't think in the US it's a big deal. Or am I wrong? I don't know. I've never heard that before. Because it brings out your desperation. No, that really is all there is to it. Players with and without shaved heads play a match. The umpire sees the shaved team in a positive light and rules in their favor a lot of the time. Even if the umpire judges fairly, as long as those rumors exist, the coaches and old alumni geezers will force you to shave. Because that's how they work, too. And since our generation was brought up this way, we'll become the same stubborn old man someday, too. Once that happens, we'll tell those young players to shave their heads, too. We did it and played our hearts out, so they should do the same, and maybe the umpires will go easy on them. Are we going to keep talking about this? If so, I could rant about this subject all night. Crap, I should have just kept rambling about everything that sucked about baseball. I didn't really want to talk about this. Oh well, it's very nice. I guess it was okay. During the summer baseball tournaments, the band would often play to root us on. Ah, that's good. If you're on the TV, you can just turn on the TV and turn on the TV. You can just turn on the TV and turn on the TV. The thing is, it's actually super rigorous. Anyone who participates has to get up early in the morning and line up their register. Then they have to carry those heavy instruments around under the blazing sun. Whenever it comes time to perform, you've got managers yelling and giving you orders. Then you have to go on without doing a practice run first. When it's all over, you're told to leave within the next half hour. At the end of the day, the only ones who are able to actually appreciate it are the people watching it at home, like you. It's tradition, so it can't be avoided to a certain extent. Sort of like baseball clubs forcing members to shave their heads. Most band club competitions are scheduled over the winter months. Want to know why? Because they're too busy supporting the sport teams over the summer. You're forced to help others instead of focusing on their own efforts. And that's the band club for you. And I disagreed with that. If the band club had an important event to go to, then I figured you should go there instead of supporting a bunch of baseball players at some other venue. Most of the bigger events for the band club were during the winter months, but if one of the light music band members had an important competition to go to, then I believed they should go. She must have put two and two together, and her eyes went wide. Shika was on keyboard, Mashida Senpai on drums, Ruko's on. what was it again? Oh, the bass. You know, that one low toned instrument that goes bum, bum, bum. They had a guitarist and vocalist at one point, Niyama, I think? But she'd already quit the band. Right before I came to Noble Academy. There weren't any other members in their groups who could sing and play at the same time, so their group's activities are on hiatus for the time being. Everything would completely fall through if Mashira Senpai is graduated. Scheduled around the same time as one of the baseball club events. All of this happened this past June. Had been a stroke of bad luck. Complaining about it wouldn't have helped anyone. All they could do was shrug it off and move on. However, still couldn't accept how everything turned out as a result. The opposite. They decided to give up on the competition and come to cheer us on. 
That's when Miyama, Miyama-san retired. She couldn't stomach it anymore, the band or the club. She's in a different band now and seems to be having a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, same. Reina could probably understand how Miyama felt and grimaced. Actually, I agreed with her. <laughs> the athletes themselves didn't really care about the brass band cheering for them since they couldn't listen to it anyway. They'd prefer to have them there for moral support, but it wouldn't have been a big deal if they weren't around. <laughs> Which was why I said something about it. Oh. It looked like she could predict the sequence of events that followed from her expression, and her expression froze. Yes, that was why I quit the baseball club. I told the coach and band club advisors to let Chika's band go to their competition, repeatedly. As a result, I couldn't stay in the baseball club any longer. They thought I was in over my head and demoted me to second string, which was intended to force me out of the club. Was that their plan all along? I wonder what they told the other club members. Everyone I had considered a friend had condemned me as a traitor. Now that I couldn't take part of the club, it became difficult to attend school on me. I was truly lucky I had been able to come to the Nova Academy. I was very fortunate Sylvie had bumped into me back then. That we were able to reunite. Well, it would have been worth it if my sacrifice at least meant Chica's group could have gone to their competition. In the end, the band club members weren't allowed to leave. Nothing came of me leaving the club. Worse yet, it created a rift in the club's morale and they lost the first round of the tournament. Summer ended in the worst way possible for both the baseball club and band club. All their hard work, as well as the support Chika's group had given in favor of their own activities, had gone to waste. Heck, waste didn't begin to cover it. Thanks to me, Chika's band couldn't even hold its usual activities. Chika. You couldn't really have a proper band without a vocalist. Apparently singing and playing an instrument at the same time was incredibly difficult. They were having a hard time filling Yama-san's shoes. I'd heard they had yet to find a replacement too. If this kept up and the third years also left, the group might evaporate into thin air. Huh. I never thought this was how the door to my past, the same one I had closed shut, would be opened. Dang it, check, huh? She hadn't considered how her presence would impact me and those around her. On that hot summer day, perhaps this was her way for getting revenge for how much trouble I caused all of them back then. I don't know, man. I don't think so. Jeez. Before I knew it, the sun had gone down. Chieka's visit must have rocked me to my very core as I spent my time spacing out and lying listlessly in my room. Reina headed out with a simple cheer up and left behind a coffee milk for some reason. <laughs> Aw. <laughs> What was I going to do about this? I couldn't believe I was ending my weekend off on a sour note. What should I do starting tomorrow? Tomorrow. Maybe I should skip school. I didn't feel like doing anything. I didn't want to let Sylvie see this brooding look I had. Ora. Oh. Ah! She popped up out of nowhere. Where would you come from? Oh, this clutches. <laughs> huh? What? I looked over and found that the windows was open. I looked over and found that the window was open. She came in through the window? What was she up to? <whistles> Just like that, we went out through the window. Ah, my shoes. Guess I did have slippers on. We cut through the bush. Yep. Yes. This is all so sudden. What's going on, Sylvie? Huh? Apple pie. Aww, she actually came through. That's nice. Yeah. She escorted me to my seat. Yeah. 
But I'm even more surprised by how fast you put this together. You made this so soon? <laughs>昨日パイの話をしてから、いてもたってもいられなくなっちゃって。うん。本当は今日はお試しのつもりだったのだけれど、焼いてみたらすごくうまくできたのは、これはぜひオーロにも試してもらわなくちゃって思って。
stop. Stop. <laughs> oh, she's shooting shots, alright. Hmm, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, we've been together for as long as I can remember. Is something wrong with that? Before I knew it, Sylvie had a look on her face that I've never seen before. How to put it? However, her usual smile returned in no time. What could it be? I had no clue. Perhaps jealousy? I wonder what was going through her mind right now. Me too. Honestly, okay, we'll wait for this wind to go away because it's starting to bug me. Oh, the wind was pretty chilly just now. Gave me chills. Or more like. You like that? I don't. Ah, uh, so cold. Nah, I'm totally fine. This is not... Uh, that was when I noticed. My feet were pretty cold. Coming here in my slippers was a bad idea as the frigid air was practically inching its way through from my ankle down to my toes. Um, I think having cold feet made it easier for your body temperature to drop, right? Huh? Sorcerous noises. Red beam of sorts shone from the robot's eyes, and I felt a sudden wave of heat washed over my feet. Although it felt warm. <laughs> Just couldn't beat this sudden chill. This could be bad. Oh, yeah. Love getting sick. That's a perfect place to stop. I like that. 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 That was good. That was good. That was a fun episode. I like that episode. You know, I don't know why he made it sound like Chieko was such a bad thing. You know, he's clearly that girl like cares about him a lot. I don't know if like romantically or just platonically, you know, but she clearly cares about him a lot, you know, so I don't know why he's all uh, like I get how or could see why. He would say that she's naggy because she does seem to be a bit naggy but geez i thought she was gonna be like extremely extremely unbearably obnoxious but she wasn't so bad and then that scene where they had the apple pie while he was like feeling down that was really nice it's those little things you know that's really nice to see i like that i i really like that art too and when they're having the tea it's really freaking nice i love it uh but that's all my thoughts for today that was a good episode enjoy that i hope you guys did as well and if you did please drop that like a reminder and subscribe if you haven't already done so and you made it this far share this video with your homies as well let's get to a thousand subscribers please anyways i'm out of here y'all stay safe and as always until next episode go vote go vote go comment on the 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 the, 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 the channel tab on the freaking uh the post i did about the visual novels if you want to see more user soft or other visual novels let me know let me know all kinds of journals all right surprise me all right cool thanks see you guys